السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ایوری ون جزاک اللہ خیر فار جوائننگ اس ٹوڈے فار دا اسٹوریز آف دا پروفٹ سو ٹوڈے وی ہیو اے ڈفرینٹ اسپیکر سسٹر کنزا ہیڈ ٹو ٹیک اے بریک بیکاز آف ماشاء اللہ ہیونگ اے بیبی سون اینڈ سسٹر مونا ہیز ٹیکن اوور فرام ہر سو ان شاء اللہ ویل ہیئر سسٹر مونا ٹیل اس دا اسٹوری آف Sisamona, which uh, Prophet is it today? Uh, inshallah, we'll do Prophet Ismail alayhi salam okay. today. Inshallah, so we'll do Prophet Ismail alayhi salam today. It's the name of my grandson, so it's special to me. So inshallah, <laughs> we'll learn about him today. And uh, so I will give the mic to Sister Mona. And uh, inshallah. So Jazakallah khair, Sister Mona, for coming, even though you're very busy today. But inshallah, you made an effort. And uh, we were uh, just couldn't share the slides, ladies. We tried our best, but somehow it's not working out. So just uh, today you're going to just be like an audio, more mm-hmm. audio than visual, inshallah. But anyway, inshallah. alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah that Sister Mona could join us. So Sorry, guys. Sister Mona. <laughs> I'm actually outside right now with my family. So because I'm in a different city, my cell phone thinks I'm someone else is using my account. So it will not allow me to sign into my Gmail, which I made the slides on, unfortunately. But inshallah, we'll do our best without them. Um, so uh, my name is Mona, as the sister um, Zakia mentioned. I am Khansa's cousin. Um, her dad is my uncle. And uh, inshallah, because she's a little busy right now, I will be conducting her classes for her. Uh, I live in Kitchener. Uh, Ontario and I have two kids that's just a little bit about me um, and inshallah let's begin um, so I understand you have done a few stories of the prophets with Khansa and you stopped at prophet Luth alayhi salam I believe um, today we will be conducting story of prophet Ismail alayhi salam also the name uh, Ismail uh, Ishmael he is referred to by in uh, Christian religion and in other textures. Um, he was the prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was the son of uh, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Um, as you learned about Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam's story, um, and it, uh, he was his son that was born after his marriage to Hajra. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about him and his dad and a little bit about how um, his prophethood came about, inshallah. So, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. One day, Ibrahim woke up and he asked his wife Hajra, who was his wife after Sara, um, to get her son and prepare for a long journey. In a few days, Ibrahim salam, started out with his wife Hajra and their son Ismail. The child was still nursing and not yet weaned. Ibrahim walked through the cultivated land, desert, and mountains until he reached the desert of the Arabian Peninsula and came to an uncultivated valley having no fruit, no trees, no food, and no water. So one day he just woke up seeing in a dream and he asked his wife to uh, pack up her quick belongings and get her son ready and they went off onto this journey. And um, his wife did not question him and she followed him because it, as he was a prophet of Allah and the dreams of the prophets are as a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they never question um, that why, it, why is he asking her to do this. And this valley that they set out to was um, located in the now currently where we know is the city of Mecca. But at that time, there was no vegetation there, no fruits, no trees, no water. Nothing was there except just a valley. The valley had no signs of life. After Ibrahim had helped his wife and child to dismount at this location, he left them with a small amount of food and water, which was hardly enough for two days. He turned around and started to walk away. His wife hurried after him, asking, Where are you going, Ibrahim, leaving us in this barren valley? Ibrahim did not answer her, but continued walking. She repeated what she said she had said, but he remained silent. Finally, she understood that he was not acting on his own initiative, but realized that Allah had commanded him to do this. She asked him, did Allah command you to do this? He replied, yes. Then his great wife said, we are not going to be 
Allah, we are not going to be lost since Allah who has commanded you is with us. So here we learn that when she asked Ibrahim salam, um, that why is he leaving them in this deserted land? Um, and when she asked him that is this a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he just only replied and said yes, she did not question him any further and um, decided to follow through. And this was uh, the from chapter 14 in the Quran, an ayah that mentions about this um, uh, these circumstances. Oh, our Lord, I have made some of my offspring to dwell in a valley with no cultivation by your sacred house, the Kaaba at Mecca, in order, our Lord, that he may offer prayers perfectly, iqamat as salat to fill some hearts among men with love towards them, and, O Allah, provide them with fruits so that they may give thanks. O our Lord, certainly you know what we conceal and what we reveal. Nothing on the earth or in the heavens is hidden from Allah. So this is the what Ibrahim salam said after he began his journey back uh, to where they had originally arrived from, which was... Um, their from where they were settled unto unto the place where he left his life his wife and his son and he's praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that um, I have fulfilled your command and I know that you will take care of them so in uh, as about Hajra and Ismail and his uh, childhood as a and him as a baby very little is known other than this um, that he was uh, with her with Hajra when they arrived at Mecca and um, we will learn shortly about what happened during the time when after Ibrahim salam left them there. Um, this is narrated by Ibn Abbas ta'ala anha that the that she used a girdle so that she might hide her tracks um, and Ibrahim brought her and her son Ismail while she was suckling him to a place near the Kaaba under a tree on the spot of Zamzam at the highest place in the mosque. During those days, there was nobody in Mecca, nor was there any water. So he made them sit over there and placed near them a leather bag containing some dates and a small water skin containing some water and set out homewards. Ismail's mother uh, was left there with her son with these two items, there, a bag that had a little bit of dates and a, a, enough water to survive for two days. And Ibrahim, uh, Ibn Abbas and his narration continues and we find that Ismail's mother went on suckling Ismail until and drinking from the water she had. When the water in the water skin had been used up, she became thirsty and her child also became thirsty. She started looking at him, tossing in agony. So once the food and the water had run out, the baby started to become hungry and she was worried that how is she going to feed him if she is not fed, as we know that uh, a mother has to be well fed in order for her to produce milk enough to feed her baby. She left him uh, for she could not endure looking at him and found that at the mountain of Asafa was the nearest mountain to her on that land. She too on it and started looking at the valley keenly so that she might see somebody. She climbed up to this mountain, As-Safa, um, so that she could locate that if she could see somebody, she could ask them um, for resources or some help for her baby. Then she descended for As-Safa, and when she reached the valley, she tucked up her robe and ran in the valley like a person in distress and trouble till she crossed the valley and reached the mountain of Al-Marwa. Al-Marwa was another peak located near the, the mountain of As-Safa, and she ran up Safa, she ran down from Safa Al Safa, and then she ran up to Al Marwa and down Al Marwa mountain. So these two peaks, she was running in between them um, and looking for some caravan or some people or some sort of resources that she could uh, use to uh, feed herself and her baby. And there she stood and started looking unexpectedly to see somebody, but she could not see anybody. She repeated that running between Safa and Marwa seven times. And we know that this running between Safa and Al-Marwa became one of the 
uh, arkan in uh, or the commandments that we fulfill during the hajj pilgrimage which is fard on uh, one of our five pillars of islam um and it was due to the struggle of this mother looking for water and food for her child and herself that she it became such a important part that it's included in our hajj journey um the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that this is the source of the tradition of the sa'i rituals of the hajj pilgrimage the going of people between them as safa and al marwa when she reached al marwa for the last time she heard a voice and she asked herself to be quiet and listened attentively she heard the voice again and said oh whoever you may be you have made me hear your voice have you got something to help me so while she was running between these two mountains and on her seventh stop on al marwa she heard this voice and she questioned that who are you are you someone who is going to help me and behold she saw an angel at the place of zamzam digging the earth with his heel or his wing in some narrations it is said he was hitting the ground with his heel and in some narrations it says it was the one of his wings till the water flowed from that place she started to make something like a basin around it to try to hold it and using her hands in this way she started filling her water skin with water with her hands and the water was flowing out water out water she had scooped from out of it the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam added may allah bestow mercy on ismail's mother had she had let the zamzam flow without trying to control it or she had not scooped from that water to fill it her water skin zamzam would have been a streaming flowing on the surface of the earth so in this spot where this angel was um stomping on a uh, a lot of water started to flow out of there and uh, around it she tried to make like a basin so that she could collect the water and preserve it and hold, collect it so that she would be able to use it and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us that at that time when this water was flowing out of this uh, spot uh, she said to it zamzam which translates to stop stop um and that is why today that spot and that water is known as zamzam water which um is still as as uh, flowing today as it was at that time and it is uh something of many benefits um it has lots of uh, uh good um benefits and uh, rewards related to this water and we also drink this on our uh hajj pilgrimage journey after some time when um there she had fed her son and her baby and some time had passed the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam continued to tell us that she drank the water and suckled her child the angel said to her don't be afraid of being neglected for this is the house of allah which will be built by this boy and his father and allah never neglects his people the house the kaaba at that time was on a high place resembling a hillock and when torrents ca- came they flowed to its right and left she lived in that way till some people from the tribe of jurham or a family from jurham passed by her and her child as they were coming through the way of the kaaba so there was this caravan or this family that arrived known as the tribe of jurham or the family of jurham which um they arrived there as they had seen some water some birds flying from a distance while they were traveling and they realized that birds are located at a place where there is water so they followed those birds the signs of the birds that they saw from a distance and when they arrived at this spot where uh, hajra and her son ismail were they realized that these two people are here and there is some water here which they asked sorry one second sorry guys it's just my kids needed something okay so we were at the zamzam water and the tribe of jurham so um when these people they saw these birds flying at a distance they said the birds must be flying around water though we know that there is no water in this valley they sent one or two messengers who discovered the source of water and returned to inform them so they all came towards the water ismail's mother was 
Sitting near the water, they asked her, do you allow us to stay with you? She replied, yes, but you will have no right to possess the water. So she made an agreement that the water would belong to everyone and they cannot claim it. They agreed to that and Ismail's mother was pleased with the whole situation as she used to love to enjoy the company of the people. And so they settled there and later on, they sent for their families who came and settled with them so that some families became prominent residents there. So this is the beginning of how Makkah was um, established, settled, and then uh, fam the tribes and the people started to grow in that area. And it was all because um, Ismail salam, and his mother Hajra were left here by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Ibrahim salam, fulfilled um, that he saw in a dream. And the while Ismail salam, grew, he grew up with the, these tribes of Durham and their families, and he grew up to learn Arabic from them. And his virtues caused them to love him and admire him as he grew up. And when he reached the age of puberty, they had him marry a woman from amongst them. So his first wife was someone who was from the Durham uh, tribe. And this is how the life and uh, pe the people settled in Makkah and um, how we uh, see it today as so many people have been in, ha are there now dwelling, alhamdulillah. And it, is, it has still been a place of where there has been endless resources. And the first resource was this uh, Zamzam water. All right. And ahead, we learned that the Prophet wasallam continued saying that after Ismail salam's mother had died, Ibrahim salam came after Ismail salam's marriage in order to see his family. And he had left before he did not find Ismail there. So Ibrahim salam came to visit Ismail salam on uh, on a few uh, trips. And on this trip, he came to visit his family after he got married. And when he asked Ismail's wife about him, she replied that he had gone in search of livelihood. So he was not home at that time when Ibrahim salam arrived and she did not know who he was. Then he asked her about their way of living and their condition. So Ibrahim salam asked his wife, Ismail salam's wife, that how is your livelihood and how are things going? And she replied, we are living in misery. We are living in hardship and destitution, complaining to him. So Ibrahim salam said, when your husband returns, convey my salutations to him and tell him to change the threshold of the gate of his house. So this was the words that he left with his wife and Ibrahim salam left. When Ismail salam came, he seemed to have felt something unusual. So he asked his wife, has anyone visited you? She replied, yes, an old man of such and such description came and asked me about you. And then I informed him and he asked about our state of living. And I told him that we were living in a hardship and poverty. On that, Ismail salam, said, did he advise you anything else? She said, yes. He told me to convey his salutations to you and to tell you to change the threshold of your gate. Ismail salam, said, it was my father and he has ordered me to leave you. Go back to your family. So Ismail salam, divorced her and married another woman from among the Jurham tribe. And this was uh, the reason for this was because you will learn later on that the, when Ibrahim salam, comes to visit Ismail salam, for the second time, um, pious women uh, and believers don't, don't complain about the situations or even a, a, a pious believer is found in two states. When he is in despair, he is praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having sabr, which is patience. And in the time of when he is happy and things when, when, um, they are, when we have fruitfulness and when we are prospering, in that state, we are thankful. So as a true believer and as a, a believer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a moment, a believer is only found in two states. And these are the two states. And the, for the woman that Ibrahim alayhi salam met on that day was in a state of um, 
saying that about how her hardships were and uh, she was not being thankful. So th- it was the advice of Ibrahim salam based on this that he should have someone else um, in as his wife, as Ismail salam. Then Ibrahim salam stayed away from them for a period as long as Allah wished and called on them again, but did not find Ismail. So he came to Ismail salam's wife and asked her about Ismail. This was uh, his second wife. She said he has gone in in search of our livelihood. Ibrahim salam asked her, how are you getting on? Asking about her sustenance and living. She replied, we are prosperous and well off. We have everything in abundance. Then she thanked Allah. Ibrahim salam said, what kind of food do you eat? She said, meat. He said, what do you drink? She said, water. He said, oh, Allah bless their meat and their water. So when he asked his wife about her livelihood and how things were going, she, she thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then she told uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam that we have, we have been eating this and we have been drinking this. So, Allah, so Ibrahim alayhi salam blessed their livelihoods with a dua. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi added that at that time they did not have grain. And if they had grain, he would have also invoked Allah to bless it. If somebody has only these two things as his sustenance, his health and disposition will be badly affected unless he lives in Mecca. The Prophet ﷺ then continued, Ibrahim ﷺ said to Ismail's wife, when your husband comes, give my regards to him and tell him that he should keep firm the threshold of his gate. When Ismail came back, he asked his wife, did anyone call call you? She replied, yes, a good looking old man came to me. So she praised him and added, he asked about you and I informed him that we were in good condition. Ismail asked her, did he give you any piece of advice? She said, yes, he told me to give his regards to you and ordered that you should keep firm the threshold of your gate. On that, Ismail said, it was my father and you are the threshold of the gate. He has ordered me to keep you with me. So on this account, when Ibrahim salam met Ismail salam's wife, the second wife, he told her that she is uh, good for him and to keep her um, as his wife. When Ibrahim salam stayed away from them for a period as long as Allah wished and called on them Afterwards, he saw Ismail under a tree near Zamzam sharpening his arrows. When he saw Ibrahim, salam, he rose up to welcome him, him and they greeted each other as a father does with his son or a son does with his father. Ibrahim salam, said, Oh Ismail, Allah has given me an order. Ismail salam, said, Do what your Lord has ordered you to do. Ibrahim asked, Will you help me? Ismail said, I will help you. Ibrahim said, Allah has ordered me to build a house here, pointing to a hillock higher than the land surrounding it. So again, on this trip, when Ibrahim came to visit Ismail, he had a dream in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had ordered him and his son Ismail to build the house of Allah, which is the Kaaba. And they were the first um, two people to raise the foundations of the house as we see it today. And we know that it was rebuilt at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu as well. When they raised the foundations of the Kaaba, Ismail salam brought the stones while Ibrahim salam built. And when the walls became high, Ismail brought the stones and put it on for Ibrahim who stood over it and carried on building. While Ismail was handing him the stones and both of them were saying in the Quran in, ayat, in Surah number to Surah Al-Baqarah in ayah number 127. Uh, this is the dua. Our Lord, accept this service from us. Verily, you are the all-hearer, the all-knowing. The Prophet wasallam then said, they, the both of them went on building and going around the Kaaba saying this. So while they were building the Kaaba, they were repeatedly making this prayer that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this service from them. All right, so um, we're going to move on now to uh, just a little bit here. Is it mixed up? Okay. All right, so once um, 
when they were building uh, when they while they were building the kaaba there was a side of the kaaba that there was a stone missing so ibrahim alayhi salam was awaiting and thinking that what should be the stone that should be placed in this corner and ismail alayhi salam was look was the one searching for the stone at that time when he arrived back to see ibrahim alayhi salam um ibrahim alayhi salam showed him there was a stone that uh, the angel brought to him it was the color of white when it arrived and it was a stone sent from heaven to place in that corner of the kaaba um over the time that stone became black and that is how we know it as hajra al aswad which means the black stone in arabic it is the stone that is still placed in the corner of the kaaba today and that was the final stone that ibrahim alayhi salam and his son ismail alayhi salam placed in the corner to complete the kaaba and after some time had passed away and the kaaba became a more uh, visited area by um, more tribes and it, it had become well settled it became a part of our hajj uh, our pilgrimage to makkah it is part of um, the pilgrimage to do the tawaf around the kaaba and this was first built by ibrahim alayhi salam and his son ismail alayhi salam and in, there is a, a spot near the kaaba called the maqam e ibrahim which is a spot um where ibrahim alayhi salam it's it's a it's a place where you go and you pray uh two nafil prayers in remembrance that he was the first person to build this house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with, with his son um after some time had passed allah, uh, allah the almighty told of ibrahim alayhi salam's affliction for his beloved son and he said after his rescue from the fire so this is from the quran um surah number 37 ayah number 99 uh and he said after his rescue from the fire verily i am going to my lord he will guide me my lord grant me an offspring from this righteous so we gave him the glad tidings of a forbearing boy and when he his son was old enough to walk with him he said oh my son i have seen in a dream that i am slaughtering you offer you in sacrifice to allah so look what you look so look what do you think Oh my father do that which you are commanded inshallah if allah wills you shall find me of the patient then when they had both submitted themselves to the will of allah and had laid him uh, and he had laid him on his forehead uh, or on the side of his forehead for slaughtering and we called out to him oh ibrahim you have fulfilled the dream the vision verily thus do we reward those who perform good deeds totally for allah's sake only verily that indeed was a manifest trial and we rans- ransomed him with a great sacrifice a ram and we left for him a goodly reminder among generations to come in later times salamun peace be upon ibrahim thus indeed do we reward the muhsinin the doers of good verily he was one of our believing slaves in this ayah we learn about the sacrifice that ibrahim alayhi salam was commanded and that was the ultimate sacrifice that he saw in his dream that he was sacrificing his son ismail alayhi salam and at that time ibrahim alayhi salam was confused and he did not understand how to approach his son and to um tell him that this is the dream that he has had and um he is thinking and then he goes to his son ismail alayhi salam and he says to him that oh my son i have seen this in a dream and um he's telling ismail alayhi salam that this is what i have seen i have seen that i am prostrating you and i am sacrificing you and all ismail alayhi salam says as a reply to his father is that and uh, oh my father do that which you are commanded inshallah you shall find me of the patient and from this um this line of ismail alayhi salam what we learn is he was such an obedient son that when his uh, father came to him and he uh, is explaining this very difficult situation that he's um, going to be uh, tested with but all ismail alayhi salam says to his father is that if this is what allah has commanded you then please fulfill that uh, commandment and you will find me patient 
And mashallah, um, because of the sacrifice that Ibrahim salam was willing to do at the moment when he had his son prostrated and ready to sacrifice him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced his son with a ram. And um, he uh, sacrificed the ram instead and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him the good news that his sacrifice has been accepted. And he and then uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Salam and peace be upon Ibrahim. And he uh, we reward the Muhsineen, the doers of good. And that was for his uh, for Ibrahim alayhi salam and his son Ismail alayhi salam. And today, when we perform our Hajj, the final step of our Hajj is that we um, sacrifice uh, an animal at the end of the pilgrimage to uh, once again incorporate. Uh, one more thing of the, the reminder of the story of Ismail alayhi salam. So many of those um, uh, conditions of Hajj are based on the story of Ismail alayhi salam, his father Ibrahim alayhi salam, and his mother Hajra alayhi salam. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala peace and blessings be uh, upon all of them. Um, and uh, one more uh, lesson that we learned from Ismail alayhi salam's story is that um, it was not mentioned here, but I, it's a good story to, um, and to know because it's an important reminder for us as well, is that Ibrahim, uh, uh, Ismail alayhi salam was one who was a fulfiller of promise. So because the main trade of, uh, of, that, er of that time was trade and um, Ismail alayhi salam was uh, in business with a person and he uh, promised that he would meet this person at a certain location where they would be discussing this uh, business transaction and he gave him a time of asr, asr prayer. And Ismail alayhi salam arrived at that location at the asr prayer time and he's waiting and waiting for this person that he has promised to meet on that on that place at that time. And this person that, that he had forgotten about the meeting. So Ismail alayhi salam is waiting there and Maghrib time has arrived. So he has waited around three to four hours and he's just uh, waiting for this person to arrive that he has to do this dealing with. And this person arrives a little after Maghrib time. And when he arrived, he apologized right away because he had forgotten about the meeting. And um, as soon as he remembered, he did arrive there. But he was, Ismail alayhi salam was so uh, keen on keeping his promises and his attribute was so strong that he was willing to just wait there for this person to arrive. And he was, uh, didn't leave. And it's a lesson for all of us because so many times, um, we forget to be patient, uh, we forget to be uh, importance of time management, importance of keeping promises. Um, me as a mother, we, uh, we make promises for our kids sometimes and we forget and um, we're not able to sometimes keep those promises either. And uh, from this story, we learned that it was so important for him and, and these attributes of him were so loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we know that the last prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam had these attributes as well and he was from the family of Ismail alayhi salam uh, which we will learn later on inshallah when we discuss the story of Muhammad, prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam um, so at this time this completes the story of Ismail alayhi salam and I wanted to uh, open up the floor and uh, have some discussions with all of you as I don't know some of you and inshallah I'll get to know you in the following uh, classes that we'll be meeting us each other in um, so maybe someone wants to maybe give me a point of something you learned today or something uh, that caught your ear something you wanted to know more about Uh, Jazakallah khair, Sister Muna. That was amazing. Um, the story was so interesting and so many pillars of our uh, deen are connected to Ismail and Ibrahim alayhi uh, salam, especially our Hajj and our Umrah and uh, yes. all the whole story, mashallah. So it's so amazing to know and this all connects the whole thing. Uh, but I, I noticed one thing that uh, in, in your stories, uh, while you were saying, the timeline is uh, uh, a little bit, uh, it's not according to how he was, right? Because when 
uh, from what I remember, that when he was mm-hmm. sacrificed, he was just a small child, like a teenager, like 12, 13 year old, Ibra- um, Ismail alayhi salam. Yes. And, he, and he uh, the marriage part you d- discussed before, and even when they were mm-hmm. building the Kaaba, he was still young. He was just a boy. He hadn't married till then, right? Because yes. The, the father was taller than him, and he used to, being a small child, used to pass the stone to him. And fa- the Ibrahim salam would put the stone. Uh, this is all the stories from all this, you know, numerous time I've heard stories. That's what I remember, right? Yes, you're right about that. Um, yeah, the so the timeline that- was a little bit off. I just wanted to clear it up. With, I'm not saying you did anything wrong. I, I don't want to say that, but I'm just saying for uh, Sister Namira and Sister Anissa, just to clear it up that the timeline was a little bit off. So don't... Um, uh, get mistaken that after he got married and then he got the sacrifice. No, it was before actually, and um, and the, he built the Kaaba before he got married too. So I just yes. wanted to make that clear. I, I mean, I, mashallah, you did an amazing job. I'm just trying to fix it. No problem, sister. The reason it, that I followed it this way is because the book that we are using it goes in this order for some reason. Um, mm-hmm. If you want for the next one. Like if you if you're okay, I can switch it around. But this this because I followed exactly the way they had it in the book, in and this was the way it was. Yeah, yeah, I know, I understand. I just wanted to clear it up. Yeah, it would be better if you go in the chrono chronological order, so that makes more sense, you know. And um, yes, it's up to exactly. you. It's up to you. I'm not saying. I'm just. I'm. I'm not gonna. You decide, but you can always clear it up with the sisters. Yeah. Any questions, sisters, if you have, you can, uh, you're can. you most welcome to ask. Um, the story about the changing the doors, uh, door, door, what is doormat? Doormat? It's a threshold. Is like that. Threshold, threshold, yeah, threshold. It's the beginning part of the door, like before you enter. That, yeah, that's it's like almost like a doormat or uh, the entrance of the, uh, the entrance, home. The entrance, yeah, entrance, yeah. yeah. Does anybody want to ask anything about that? That could be confusing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you know why uh, why Ibrahim alayhi salam was so strong about changing the wife who complained and the wife who didn't complain was good? Why do you think? I would ask you, Sister Namira and Sister Anisa, why do you think Ibrahim alayhi salam said that? Well, I think, you know, we're, we're supposed to be appreciative of what we have and not focus on what we don't have, um, you know, to, to have a good life. Um, always look at, you know, what is in front of you, not what is not. Right. Yeah, mashallah, that's exactly what it was. Yes, and mashallah. Yeah, Sister Mona, you can add to it. And Sister Namira, do sure. you want to add something to that? It's always, you know, when I heard it first time, I go, my God, that's such a strong statement. Like, yeah, why would you divorce your wife just because she complained? And how much do we complain all the time? Astaghfirullah, I mean. Mm -hmm. But uh, somebody told me, my teacher told me that, um, you know, he's he was the prophet of that time. So again, he's the role model. So he has to have, uh, he has to have complete, a person who is completely supportive, and who is a very high state of Akida, like it's it's a low state of Iman that we complain all the time. And we all do it, I mean, unfortunately. We all yeah, do it all the time. And it's such a normal thing to complain. Like, you know, we went out. So yeah. I was thinking, my God, it's such a strong statement that you went out once. And uh, But if you think he was the role model of that time and he needs support, and if this wife is like that, then that will bring his iman level down, and he, how will he be a good um, prophet of Allah while you know he's teaching everybody in his society? In yes, the, in that, and yeah, the rules, so, yeah, rules for the prophets are stronger, right? Um, yeah, much so higher. The, yeah, yeah, the bar then, is much higher for them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so because of this, and because as a believer, like I mentioned, we are uh, uh, supposed to be only in two states, right? When we don't have enough or we are struggling in that uh, state, we are in sabr, which is patience. And in the state when we have a lot and we are prospering, we are doing shukr, which is thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this, in this uh, two people's story of the first wife and the second one, this was the difference that when uh, the first, in the first situation, instead of being patient, she was 
I'm more complaining towards the things that were happening. And in the second uh, situation, the grains or the some of the resources were missing, but she was thankful about the amount that she had. So she was doing shukar in that state. And this is why Ibrahim alayhi salam's um, decision was based on these responses. Another pointer from that story I took was uh, that, uh, you know, she was a total stranger. Like, you know, he just came and she'd never met him. She didn't even know he was her father-in-law. But yeah. then she's already complaining. Like, you know, how much complaining does she do to her friends then? If she's yeah. complaining to a total stranger, like if somebody comes in my house and says, are you happy with your husband? I would go, I mean, why would I tell you? Like, but I would say, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. Like, I wouldn't open up my problems to him. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but that she's opening up, that means she's a like a, how do you call it? Like a constant complainer. If the strange yeah. man is here and she's already complaining, like that means she's doing it a lot more to the others. Yeah. That's what I understood, you know, because making your son divorce a wife just because she comes, I thought was not uh, a very big reason. But then when you go into the story, you find out that, yeah, it is. It is. It makes a very big difference. And he was the prophet of that time. So you cannot have uh, a person like that as to not support you, right? Any yes, other comments okay. anybody and, wants and to say? As a, as yeah, a sorry. Partner, like as a husband or as a wife, you are you are in the Quran mentioned that we are garments of each other, right? Mm -hmm. And what does a garment do? A garment covers up your uh, your body parts or your faults, right? Yeah. So, we, so a husband is that for his wife, and a wife is that for his, for her husband, and this is how the harmony becomes because you are covering each other's faults and you are uh, also protecting each other, right? Garment also prote protects you. Yeah, from so, the weather and yeah. Yeah. So this is also one of the reasons behind this decision. I yeah. love it, and yeah. I am, I'm the only Muslim in my family, so it's really refreshing to hear that that is really how things should be, you know, about supporting each other, protecting each other, and um, I have learned so much since I reverted and have so much hope since I've reverted, and Sister Namira, she's lifted me up several times when I needed it. Um, even before I reverted. So it's really important to have, you know, good, good people yeah. around you who support Mashallah, you. That's, that's very Mashallah, good that's hear. amazing to hear that Sister Namira is such a big support to you. Mashallah. And Sister Namira, we, we thank you for doing that. Mashallah. Yeah. And Sister Anissa, it's nice to hear. Yeah. yeah. And and she's, Inshallah, and your family will follow. Away, you know, and, and she's always there, you know. So it's, yeah. it's wonderful. That's amazing. Yeah, we should support each other. Well, that's what we try to do. We try to yeah. create a buddy system so we can always, you know, people uh, text sometimes on the group. And if anybody needs any help, we try to call mm -hmm. them if we're available uh -huh. so we can you know, be there for each other. That's the whole reason why we created Embrace, hmm. that, you know, we are there for you, you guys. Because it. otherwise it's, it's kind of lonely. I still don't feel 100% comfortable at my masjid because I'm different <laughs> and you know still learning but I'm you know so it's really nice because I feel very safe with you and mm -hmm. very comfortable with you so thank you for all you do <laughs> no no you're most welcome yeah you guys uh, we are here for you guys and yeah we do take out time so that we can help you in any way and all these stories are done so that you guys can you know connect to them because I it's amazing how much all the prophets have gone through and each you know like Maryam was a single mom and um, even Hajra literally was a single mom because she had the baby and he the husband left her and literally she died before he even came back so it's yeah. so sad like these are all single moms going through so much but you know amazing kids they brought up amazing they themselves were so amazing so it's like mm -hmm. hope for us that, you know, we all go through so much. Like you are literally a single Muslim in your whole family, Anissa. So you uh, we, you can, you know, relate to Hajra, how she must be feeling. And uh, another part of Jurham was that when Jurham came and they said, usually, uh, you know, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was telling us that usually if a tribe comes and there's water, water is so important in the desert. 
that you, if it's just a woman and a child taking care of it, they would have just easily killed her and taken over. Yes. But because Allah was protecting her and this is how Allah wanted to establish Makkah there. He, they, she said, she said an amazing thing, like being just a woman with a child. She said, no, I want the control of the water. And they agreed, like both of them. How did she say that had the courage to say it? And he at the tribe of Juram had the courage to say, yeah, okay, we'll let you have the control as long mm. as you let us live there. Like who does that? But it's, you know, everything is in hands of Allah. Like Allah can change the whole situation. And, you know, we like look at the big plan behind uh, leaving Hajra and Ismail in that desert. Like the big plan was like building of Makkah, which is like all Muslims go there now. And, yeah. uh, you know, for that time, Hajra felt like, why are you leaving me here? Like, what is wrong with you kind of a thing, right? Mm. But, uh, you know, the big plan behind this was that Makkah is going to be established. Kaaba is going to be built by them. And hundreds and millions of people will come here really, you know. And this is yes. what our dream that to go there, right? So, like, we sometimes we, we are doing very little things, but we don't know what Allah's big plan is, you know. Yeah, it's a lesson for uh, us for in our lives, right? Sometimes we find some some situations look like it's very bad for you and you, you don't want to do it. But, you know, like the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one that knows the good in the situation or behind the commandment that what is the reason? Like, for example, waking up for Fajr, it's very difficult and it feels very hard. Sometimes you just want to skip or doing wudu at that time is very difficult. But there is benefit in that. Uh, that we are learning now through science that it's important to wake up in the middle of your sleep in the night and move your body. And this was something just discovered last year. But uh, but this was the reason maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had this uh, it for us in our religion. And so many things that we do in our religion have some scientific backing. But because we don't have the research yet, we don't know. Like, for example, fasting as well now in today's knowledge we know intermittent fasting is a good thing and wow. uh, we, we had fasting for Ramadan for years before that right so right. and uh, the Prophet وسلم, used to fast two days every week um, and this is something that now today we know is a healthy thing for your body um, wow. so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has that knowledge behind every commandment that he has put towards us it's just and that time we don't know and we can't understand so it seems difficult yeah is that so true exactly yeah subhanallah anything you want to add sister namira we just have a few more minutes oh just to sort of add that oh yeah no it's just been um you're wonderful listening to these um sessions and um yeah i'm just i'm just wonderful listening and trying to absorb everything else and um yeah my sister anisa um she's just amazing too um <laughs> yeah so uh back at your sus um, are you and both in uh, new zealand you both are in new zealand right no i'm, I'm um, in maryland i'm in the u.s oh sorry i get mixed up my sister ang i think she's yeah, from I'm, new zealand yeah i don't I'm a, yeah I'm the same person because I can't, ch I, don't, I haven't changed my name on WhatsApp because my family go on WhatsApp. Doesn't matter. You don't uh, have to change your name. In Islam, you don't have to. Yeah, um, no, but that's why but I have. Unless uh, it, it has a very, like, uh, religiously, if it has a meaning which is totally uh, it, against it, Islam, it, then, yeah, you have to. But I don't know about Namira. It sounds very nice. I don't think you need to change your name. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was, well, my, my given name is Ange. Or Angela, actually. Um, but oh, so I you are in New Zealand yeah. then? Yeah, I'm the same person. <laughs> oh, you are? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, you, know you're in Namira and then you're Ang over there. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I know it's very confusing, but... That's, no, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah. Don't worry about it. I'm terrible with names. It's my fault, not you. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. <laughs> <laughs> So that's nice. And I like how you and Anissa are connected and, you know, cheer each other up. And that's good. Uh, Sister Thal and Sister, um, um, I think Amina, they uh, they need, a, Helena, I think her name is. They need help sometimes too, yeah. So it's good to know that you call each other. That's good, mashallah. Yeah, 
you do our job. <laughs> we are not yeah. doing such a good job. So you guys have to oh, do you, it to each other. You guys do a wonderful job. Um, yeah, I do. Um, Helena is um, Amina. I do. Um, yeah, we do chat from time to time as well. Yeah, she um, really she, needs to talk yeah. to people a lot. Like she's very lonely. Excellent. Yeah. Yes, she is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I talk to her once in a while, but then, um, yeah, I don't give her that much attention that I should. Yeah. Mm. Anyways. Uh, sister Zakia, do we do any dua after the class? Yes, or? yeah, we do. Yeah. We, I, I usually finish with the dua. Uh, any other questions, Sister Anissa and uh, Namira? If you don't, then we will end the class. And Sister Mona is very busy. Sorry, Sister Mona, you, no you probably problem. want to go and attend to your kids. <laughs> No, no worries at all. Inshallah, next uh, weekend, I'm okay. It's just be- right now, I am also shifting between two houses. Oh, my so God, mashallah. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, and uh, the closings are a month apart for both of them. So it's just one month of going back and forth. Uh, but it's going to, oh, wow. inshallah, sh- I should be able to uh, handle it. It's just one hour once a week. Mashallah, yeah, I was uh, given oh, the option, you. but I kind of refused. I'm sorry. I'm, I have so oh, many so other cool. things going on. Too. And no, I, I'm actually I don't have young stories. kids and I'm now moving and I still complain. So I should be, sh- I should be quiet. <laughs> no, I, I love uh, it's a reminder for me, too. Right. Because I've done stories as kids. I've done kids classes mostly. But for adults, this is my first experience. But it's so much learning for me as well at the same time. So I'm a student just with all of you, inshallah. Well, inshallah. you're wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Jazakallah khair. Okay, yeah. I'll just end with the dua. And no questions, right? Anisa and Namira and Ang. Sister Ang. Yeah, and no. yeah. No, I'm all good. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. nice Enjoy. seeing you okay. guys. Encourage yeah. other of your friends to come because we have this every Saturday. And uh, mashallah, we all learn so much. So encourage other yeah. friends if you can. Whenever yeah, you I've talk to, to the out. other people, other girls, tell them to please join. Yeah, I've tried to get Amina to come along, but she doesn't seem to. You know, she things. hasn't. I've been reminding her too. Yeah, she doesn't. She doesn't yeah. come to many of the classes I've been reminding her. But I don't know. Anyway, inshallah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll end now. Um, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خص إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا صالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر سبحانك اللهم بحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك and Jazakallah Khair for coming and Jazakallah Khair Sister Munaf to give us your one hour even though you're so busy may Allah reward you and give baraka in your time inshallah Assalamu alaikum yeah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everyone. Wa alaikum assalam. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz, okay, recording, I have to stop.